Yeah, one last wheelie for Valentino Rossi. Tragedy at the track. A 13-year-old motorcycle racer was killed in a warm-up lap at the legendary Indianapolis Motor Speedway. I turned myself out from underneath the bike. Everything turned except for my leg, so I, I broke my leg, spiral fractured my leg. These are the most emotionally charged moments in motorcycle racing history, and it all begins with the Dunlop family. In a quiet corner of Northern Ireland, three graves stand closely together, each bearing the name Dunlop. This isn't just a family plot, it's a testament to a legacy intertwined with the very fabric of motorcycle racing. Joey, Robert, and William Dunlop, each a titan of the road, met the same fate while pursuing their passion. Yet, the story doesn't end with their tragic departures. Uncle of the family, Joey Dunlop, remains a towering figure in motorcycle racing, celebrated for his unparalleled 26 Isle of Man TT victories a record that stood as a testament to his skill and bravery on the track. What about the uh, weather conditions on that first lap? Uh, the first lap wasn't so good, but the rest of the laps was all clear. You said when you came in you thought it was too short. You'd prefer a six-lap race? Oh, I'd say I think nearly I'd have preferred a six-lap one. You know, it seemed just a half a race. <laughs> his tragic end came in Estonia in 2000 at the age of 48, when he collided with trees after being thrown from his 125cc bike in the rain. Robert Dunlop, Michael's father, not only faced the track's dangers, but also overcame a horrific crash in 1994 that nearly ended his career. That's the remains of his Honda, and this is what happened. An amateur video captures the moment where the rear wheel just seems to explode away from the machine, and there was nothing that Robert could do about it. Yet, he returned to racing, demonstrating an indomitable spirit, until his own life was claimed by the sport in 2008, at an iconic race in Ireland, known as the Northwest 200. William Dunlop, Michael's brother, struggled with the risks of racing, especially after their father's death. He considered stepping away from the sport, prioritizing his young family. However, the lure of racing proved too strong. William's life was tragically cut short in 2018 during a practice session due to a mechanical failure on his bike. Michael Dunlop, despite the profound losses, races with a resolve that honors his family's legacy. The reasons behind Michael's determination to continue racing, despite these profound losses, are deeply rooted in honoring his family's legacy and demonstrating the same courage and passion for motorcycle racing that his brother, father, and uncle displayed. If it wasn't for my dad, I wouldn't have been racing. His victories at the Isle of Man TT, now totaling 25, are not just wins. They are tributes to his family's enduring spirit. Each race is a moment of remembrance, a celebration of the Dunlop's contribution to motorcycle racing, and a personal journey through joy and sorrow. But another name that stands tall in the world of motorcycle racing is none other than Italian racer Alex Zanardi's name. However, Zanardi isn't just known for his racing prowess, but for his extraordinary journey through adversity. Born into a family with a passion for speed, Zanardi's life took a dramatic turn following a catastrophic crash that would redefine his destiny. Zanardi is extremely critical. He's had severe injuries to both of his lower extremities, has had significant blood loss, but he is responding, he is breathing on his own. Yet, this was merely the beginning of a story that would inspire millions. Alex's early years were marked by a thirst for speed, a trait that led him from go-karts to the pinnacle of Formula One and IndyCar racing. Despite a roller coaster career, his determination never waned. But in 2001, fate dealt Zanardi its harshest blow, a crash that resulted in the loss of both legs. The world held its breath, but Alex's spirit remained unbroken. Miraculously, Zanardi not only survived, but emerged with a renewed appetite for life. Refusing to be defined by his injuries, he turned to hand cycling, channeling his racer's resolve into a new form of competition. Former Formula One motor racing driver Alex Zanardi, who lost both legs following a crash in 2001, has won Paralympic gold in the cycling road races. His efforts culminated in gold medals at the London and Rio Paralympics, achievements that speak volumes of his indomitable will. Beyond the track, Zanardi's philanthropy shines bright, offering hope and support to children facing similar challenges. His life, 
marked by both extraordinary achievements and profound challenges, serves as a beacon of resilience, reminding us that the human spirit knows no bounds. However, a prime example of this is none other than Mick Doohan's Road to Glory. In the late 80s and early 90s, the motorcycle racing landscape was largely dominated by American riders, with Australians like Wayne Gardner and Mick Doohan emerging as rare exceptions. Doohan, stepping into the world of motorcycle racing in 1989, found himself in the shadows of his competitors and within a team where he was not the first choice. Yet, freed from the burdens of expectation, he absorbed every ounce of knowledge from the legends around him, preparing for the moment when his potential would unfold on the global stage. The turning point came with the introduction of the Big Bang engine in 1992. a technological marvel that leveled the playing field and gave Doohan the edge he needed. That season he showcased his prowess, only for fate to intervene cruelly at the Dutch Grand Prix. A devastating crash led to severe injuries to his right leg, casting doubts on his future in the sport. The intervention of Dr. Claudio Costa and the Clinica Mobile team saved his leg and, arguably, his career. Duhan's spirit, undeterred by the prospect of never racing again, blazed through the recovery process, fueled by a singular focus to return stronger. I need to, to, to get myself back mentally into a position where I could uh, destroy some of the, <laughs> some of the uh, opposition. The years that followed were a testament to Duhan's relentless drive. By 1994, fully recovered and mentally strong, he embarked on a journey of dominance, securing five consecutive world titles. Duhan's career, however, was bookended by tragedy. Another horrific crash in 1999, this time in Spain, forced him into retirement. Well, this, was the, this was the one out of, uh, out of Spain, out of the crash in Spain. And that was the last time I raced, you know. Yet, even as his physical capabilities were curtailed, his legacy was already immortalized. Not just as a champion, but as a fighter who refused to be defined by his setbacks. Shifting gears to number six, at the peak of his career, when the roar of the crowd and the thrill of victory were all in a day's work, Casey Stoner, a name synonymous with motorcycle racing excellence, faced a challenge unlike any other. It wasn't a rival on the track or a tricky circuit that threatened his reign. It was his own body turning against him in a silent war that few could understand. Stoner, the Australian prodigy who clinched the world title twice, had his journey cut short not by a lack of skill or desire, but by an invisible adversary, chronic fatigue syndrome, CFS. His announcement of early retirement at just 26 sent shockwaves through the racing world. Fans and critics alike struggled to grasp how a rider of his caliber, at the height of his powers, could walk away from the sport he dominated. The truth, however, lay buried beneath the surface. Stoner's battle with CFS was a harrowing ordeal, marked by days when even the simple act of moving from bed to couch was a monumental effort. Started to get uh, some extreme symptoms and, and then struggled to get uh, out of bed in the morning just to even get to the couch. The condition, characterized by profound tiredness, sore throats, headaches, and an inability to recover from exertion, left him a shadow of his former self. Despite his physical prowess on the track, Stoner faced days filled with an overwhelming exhaustion that no amount of rest could cure. His decision to retire wasn't a surrender to the pressures of competition, but a necessary step to preserve what remained of his health and well-being. As Stoner stepped away from the racetrack, he left behind a legacy that transcends the world of motorcycle racing. His journey is a testament to the fact that sometimes the hardest battles are fought off the track, in the quiet moments far from the cheering crowds. And cheering crowds there were when the sun set on the Ricardo Tormo circuit in Valencia, Spain. The motorcycle racing world gathered to bid farewell to a legend whose name has been synonymous with the sport for over a quarter of a century. Valentino Rossi, affectionately known as The Doctor, took to the track one last time, marking the end of an era that has captivated millions around the globe. From the moment Rossi announced his retirement, the atmosphere was charged with emotion the circuit, a place where Rossi had celebrated numerous victories, was transformed into a grand stage for his farewell. The air was filled with the echoes of a career that spanned over 400 races, 
beginning in 1996. They've got back ahead of Martinez. This is absolutely incredible. Side by side. Who's going to give way? Surely it won't be Rossi. It is. Rossi, a titan of the track, with nine world championships to his name, was not just bowing out. He was leaving behind a legacy unparalleled in the world of motorcycle racing. Rossi's last race saw him finish in 10th place. Further back, about to cross the line, the last lap in the career of the great Valentino Rossi. A fitting end for a rider whose career spanned over two decades, starting back in 1996. The crowd of 75,000 fans stood in ovation, honoring Rossi's 432nd GP with cheers filling the air a tribute to a rider affectionately known as the Doctor. The circuit was covered with yellow, Rossi's signature color, with his number 46 adorning Bagnaia's helmet and flags waving in tribute to the legend. The paddock was lined with the motorcycles that brought Rossi his world titles, each representing a chapter of his extraordinary journey. He leaves behind records that speak volumes of his prowess, 115 victories, 235 podiums and a career that stretched longer and shone brighter than any before. To my performance down there with Snow White and the seven dwarfs, each one of them representing a year of each of his world championships. But on the flip side, number four brings a return rather than a departure. On a sun-drenched track in Portimao, Portugal, the motorcycle racing world braced for the return of a titan. The better of the, uh, the brotherly battle with Alex Marquez at the moment, so Mark Marquez looks like he might late on here rescue a top six. Mark Marquez, the eight-time world champion, was about to mark his long-awaited comeback, setting the stage for a monumental resurgence. After a harrowing nine months of recovery from a significant injury, Marquez's return wasn't just a moment of personal triumph, but a beacon of inspiration for fans and competitors alike. Marquez, known for his unparalleled blend of talent, tenacity, and sheer will, had faced a series of grueling challenges. His career, adorned with victories and championships, had also been marked by physical trials, including broken limbs and surgeries. Yet, each setback only seemed to fuel his indomitable spirit. The injury in July 2020, a broken humerus, was a rare and severe setback, but it was met with Marquez's characteristic resolve. Opting for a cautious approach, he aimed to return only when fully recovered, a testament to his maturity and unwavering ambition. As Marquez geared up for the Portuguese Grand Prix, the anticipation was palpable. His career, a testament to overcoming adversity, was about to enter a new chapter. Marcus's journey through recovery was a testament to resilience. Undergoing multiple surgeries and facing the specter of never racing again, he emerged with a renewed sense of purpose. As the engines roared to life in Portimao, Marcus's presence electrified the atmosphere. His performance, culminating in a remarkable seventh place finish, was a display of skill, determination, and heart arrived because as Marc Marquez climbs over the hill and crosses the line, he's got one lap left. Crossing the finish line, Marquez's emotional outburst in the garage was a raw, unfiltered moment of joy and relief. It was the culmination of months of physical and emotional struggle, a testament to his journey back to the sport that defines him. Marc Marquez's comeback story is more than just a chapter in his career. It's a narrative of human resilience a reminder of the strength that lies in determination and the courage to face adversity head on. But in the world of motorcycle racing, where the thrill of speed and the pursuit of victory dominate, the story of Peter Lenz reminds us of the profound sacrifices and the inherent dangers faced by those who dare to chase their dreams on two wheels. Peter, a prodigious talent in motorcycle racing, tragically lost his life at the tender age of 13 during a support race at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway, leaving the racing community in mourning and sparking a conversation about the risks young riders face. From a young age, Peter displayed an extraordinary passion and skill for motorcycle racing, accumulating lap records, race wins, and national titles with a passion that remained for years. Mentored by the likes of famous rider Keith Code, and admired by figures in both European and American racing paddocks, including Colin Edwards, Peter's future in the sport seemed destined for greatness. 
The accident occurred during a warm-up lap, a situation that underscores the unpredictable nature of motorsport, where even with the highest safety standards, the risk can never be entirely mitigated. Lenz's loss was felt deeply across the motorcycle racing community, highlighting not only the dangers of the sport, but also the profound impact a young racer can have on those around him. But on the bright side, Wayne Rainey's story is a testament to the indomitable spirit of a champion, a narrative that transcends the world of motorcycle racing and touches the heart of anyone who hears it. After dominating the 500cc World Championship with three consecutive titles from 1990 to 1992. And Wayne Rainey is absolutely delighted as he punches the air in jubilation. Rainey's career took an unimaginable turn. A catastrophic crash at the 1993 Italian Grand Prix at Misano changed his life forever, leaving him paralyzed from the middle of the chest down. However, Rainey's story didn't end there. Despite the adversity, Rainey never lost his love for racing. His passion and determination saw him remain an influential figure in the sport, taking on the role of Moto America president and continuing to inspire racers and fans alike. Then, 26 years after his life-altering accident, Rainey made an emotional return to riding. Thanks to a specially modified Yamaha YZFR1, with the support of Moto America, Yamaha Motors, and a company by the name of Alpine Stars that focuses on safety equipment, Rainey was able to experience the thrill of riding once again at the Button Willow Raceway in California. Dressed in a replica of his iconic red and white racing leathers, this moment was more than just a ride. It was a powerful statement about overcoming obstacles, rekindling passions, and living life to the fullest, no matter the circumstances. But at last in number one is the unforgettable story of Italian rider Marco Simoncelli. Simoncelli's journey through motorcycle racing was nothing short of cinematic, marked by his distinctive style, both on and off the track. With his wild hair and fearless racing, he was a figure of immense talent and charisma, captivating fans worldwide until his untimely death during a race in Sipang, Malaysia, on October 23, 2011. Treacherous Turn 11 Marco lost control of his bike, initiating a chain of events that would lead to unimaginable consequences. On that fateful day, as he maneuvered through Turn 11 at around speeds upwards of 80 miles per hour, Simoncelli lost control of his bike. It was a routine racing incident that turned deadly when his bike, instead of sliding away, veered back onto the track, directly into the path of oncoming racers Colin Edwards and Valentino Rossi. The collision was unavoidable. Edwards and Rossi, despite their best efforts, could not evade Simoncelli. The impact was severe, with Simoncelli suffering fatal injuries. Simoncelli suffered catastrophic injuries from the impact, including massive head, neck, and chest trauma, leading to immediate cardiac arrest, resulting in death. Simoncelli's helmet, crucial for rider protection, was dislodged during the accident, raising significant concerns about equipment safety standards. The force of the collision, involving two bikes and riders at high speed, was enough to break the helmet strap, a feature designed to withstand up to 1,650 pounds of force. Because of the, of the bad crash occurred to him during the race, he was hit by other riders and he reported um, very important trauma to the head, to the neck and to the chest. When uh, the, our medical staff arrived on him, he was unconscious. Simoncelli's legacy is a touching story of passion and dreams chased on the razor's edge of motorcycle racing. Every year, his parents, Paolo and Rosella, return to Kuala Lumpur, a pilgrimage of remembrance and love, underscoring the depth of their loss and the enduring bond they share with their son. The tragedy of Marco Simoncelli's death sent shockwaves through the racing community, reminiscent of the sorrow that followed Ayrton Senna's passing in 1994. Simoncelli, much like Senna, was not just a racer. He was an icon whose spirit and vibrancy transcended the track. The loss was deeply felt, a wound in the heart of the sport that has yet to fully heal. His legacy? 
From having a circuit named after him, the Misano World Circuit Marco Simoncelli, to the founding of a foundation in his name, Marco's impact stretches far and wide. The number 58, his racing number, retired from European racing in his honor, symbolizes a respect that's rare and heartfelt. Simoncelli's untimely passing in a tragic accident at Sepang left the motorsport world in mourning. Yet, his father's reflections, even in death, he was so beautiful, I love him deeply, speak volumes of the love and admiration Marco inspired in those who knew him and those who only knew of him. After riding through the emotional peaks and valleys of motorcycle racing's most unforgettable stories, it's time to turn the corner. Because in some instances, riders have been caught with items not quite intended for racing, that's why in this video, we take a look at banned things in motorcycle racing.